And he's dealing with Glenn, who, who doesn't know shit about basketball. Glenn, Glenn Taylor. Great, yeah, probably well, I a, think we weren't concerned about the time apart. I know. <laughs> you know he's going you know, to make, you know, make money, but he don't know anything about basketball. Ah, yes, Kevin Garnett, always a Hall of Fame shit talker, and now an actual Hall of Famer. But this time, his ability to hold a grudge is going too far. His ridiculous beef with T-Wolves owner Glenn Taylor is going to prevent the fans of that team from watching their favorite player's number be retired. They say there's three sides to every story, and that's the case here. KG's side, Glenn Taylor's side, and the truth. No, not that truth. I mean, like, what actually happened. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about what actually happened and why KG should let the Timberwolves retire number 21. Hey guys, it's Casey Kiernan, host of the AM Hoops YouTube channel. Hit us with a subscribe and notification bells. It helps out the channel a lot. We're all waiting for our beloved game to come back, but in the meantime, still dropping five videos per week. Garnett recently told Sham Sharania, quote, I'll always have a special place for the city of Minneapolis and the state of Minnesota in my heart, but I don't do business with snakes. I don't do business with snake m****. I try not to do business with openly snakes or people who are snake-like. So look, you may or may not know KG's side of the story here, but how did we get to this place? Kevin Garnett was drafted by Flip Saunders in 1995 out of high school. He is, without a doubt, the best Timberwolf of all time. He's a top 15 player. He gave the T-Wolves his best years, and he was paid handsomely for it too. In the 1997-98 season, owner Glenn Taylor signed off on a then record contract for 126 million bucks. Again, this was back in the mid 90s. He wasn't paid in wins though. Don't get me wrong, they were successful, but the best Minnesota did was a run to the Western Conference Finals in 2004 with their big three of the big ticket, Sam Cassell and Latrell Sprewell. If Sam Cassell didn't get injured, they might have gone to the finals. Now, Cassell and Sprewell left shortly after that. They were angry about not getting contract extensions, and things deteriorated from there. The last three seasons before Kevin Garnett was traded to the Celtics, the Timberwolves missed the playoffs. Things got worse between Garnett and owner Glenn Taylor too. So Taylor decided to trade the once untradeable greatest franchise player ever. The T-Wolves pulled off the biggest trade in NBA history at the time, a seven for one deal. Boston got a 31 year old KG, Minnesota got five young players, two first round picks and cash considerations. Now, it turns out that the T-Wolves lost that trade, but at the time it was considered to be great for their future. KG had wanted to be a Timberwolf for life, but he changed his mind. He said at the time, quote, I just got to thinking that at the end of the day, I'm loyal to a point where I feel like if someone's loyal to me, I have no problem with that. But when that changes, it's pretty easy for me. The loyalty Garnett's talking about there came down to the negotiations between him and Glenn Taylor. Taylor didn't want to give him the dollar amount that Garnett felt like he deserved at the time, being 31 and past his prime. Also, Garnett wanted the team to trade for veterans. Taylor wanted to get younger. Also, Flip Saunders was fired, which Garnett didn't like either. It sounds like if the team wasn't run the way KG wanted, and he didn't get the salary he asked for, he considered it disloyal. I don't blame the Timberwolves for trading KG at the time either. His best years were behind him, and the hole they were gonna get back was massive. Now it's too bad for them that the trade didn't work out. Plus, if Glenn Taylor and Garnett disagreed on his salary, for me, it's kind of hard to side with KG. Garnett already got his money. That $126 million extension, which was a record at the time in 97, another fat deal in 2003. If the team had missed the playoff for three straight years, asking Garnett to take a pay cut seems reasonable. Things did work out though for KG on the court. Of course, he went on to cement his legacy with a championship in Boston. It's all he was really missing too. By the time he retired, KG had 15 All-Stars, nine All-NBA defense teams, a Defensive Player of the Year, and an MVP. Five years after the title in Boston, they traded Garnett, Pierce, and others to the Nets in another lopsided deal. Don't answer the phone if Danny Ainge is calling, by the way. Eventually, Garnett made his way back to Minnesota, but here's where even more drama happened. 
It's been reported all over the place that Garnett discussed with Flip Saunders, who coached the team again by that time, that they would team up to buy the franchise from Glenn Taylor. And at the time, Glenn Taylor was open to selling. Garnett would also have a major voice in front office decisions. So with that agreement in place, he waived his no trade clause, moved back to Minnesota to finish his career, and they signed a 38-year-old KG to another extension, this one for two years. I mean, I know he was a valuable mentor to that young core of Carl Anthony Towns, Andrew Wiggins, and Zach Levine, but another extension at 38 years old, wow. But then tragically, Flip Saunders suddenly died in 2015 of cancer. It wasn't just a dark day and a dark period for the Timberwolves, but for the entire NBA. Garnett has since come out and said he doesn't like the way that the team handled, especially the ceremony for Flip after he passed. He wanted more than three minutes to talk at the pregame ceremony, and he wanted a banner commemorating Flip right away. He said, quote, you have high school banners. You have hockey banners. You couldn't put a flip banner in Target Center, someplace that we helped build. We established that market. I helped grow that with him. You can't put him in the rafters. They did eventually put up a banner, but it wasn't fast enough for Kevin Garnett. After the death of Flip Saunders, Sam Mitchell, who Garnett was very close to, former teammate, was put in as acting head coach. He was let go after a year. Glenn Taylor fired him over the phone. That was probably the wrong way to do it, and it definitely upset Kevin Garnett. Kevin Garnett did actually end up retiring after Sam Mitchell was let go, and he did so in a way that helped the organization. He accepted a buyout that allowed the team to sign both Taj Gibson and Jeff Teague, not just one. That helped kick off the Tom Thibodeau era. But wait, Garnett expected to be the one making basketball decisions when he retired, not Tibbs. He also expected to own a piece of the team. What happened to that? Well, it was clear in that Shams interview, it's made a lot of headlines, Garnett is still pissed. He said, quote, Glenn and I had an understanding before Flip died, and when Flip died, that understanding went with Flip. For that, I won't forgive Glenn. Now here's the issue with what Garnett is saying. He supposedly had an agreement to be part of a group to buy the team from Glenn Taylor when he retired. He would make basketball decisions too. It's why he waived his no trade clause was based on that promise. But it's not clear who promised him that or how much he was talking to Glenn Taylor at the time. It's against the rules in the CBA to negotiate any kind of ownership stake with an active player, and Glenn Taylor and KG's relationship was still salty from 2007 when he was traded to the Celtics. Garnett, though, did trust Flip Saunders more than anyone in basketball. Most of the discussions at the time were with Flip. It's true that Taylor did want to sell the team at one time, but he is allowed to change his mind. Another thing KG said to Shans was, if he had any regret, it would be not leaving the Timberwolves sooner. He said, quote, if I could actually go back and change anything, I would have left Minnesota a little earlier, knowing that the management wasn't committed as I was or wasn't committed at all. Now, I don't know if they're not committed or just dumb. This is a team that took Johnny Flynn ahead of Steph Curry. They took Derek Williams ahead of Kawhi Leonard or Kimball Walker, Klay Thompson, but they did at least try to build around KG before he turned 30. They did draft Kevin Love, Carl Anthony Towns later, Zach Levine. In recent years, they've traded for Andrew Wiggins, D'Angelo Russell, Jimmy Butler. My point is they are trying to win. They just always seem to mess it up. And that is exactly why Kevin Garnett, whether you think he's right or wrong, should put this beef to the side. He should do it for the fans of the Minnesota Timberwolves. After all, this guy still says he has love for Minnesota. Next to raising a banner, or winning a ring, one of the greatest things for a fan base is to raise a jersey to the rafters, to celebrate your favorite player, your best player, and relive those memories. I mean, these poor people root for basically the worst team in American sports. The Knicks are bad too, but Minnesota has had one winning season in their 17 years of existence without Garnett. Even with the big ticket, their overall record was just above 500. One example of this is LeBron James putting his beef with Cavaliers owner Dan Gilbert to the side. I mean, this is a guy, Dan Gilbert, who publicly ripped and embarrassed LeBron with an open letter after he signed with the Heat. 
LeBron swallowed his pride a few years later to go back to Cleveland to try to win a title for that city and that fan base, not for Dan Gilbert. Yes, Kevin Garnett has had his feelings hurt by Glenn Taylor, the owner of the T-Wolves throughout the years. Sometimes I do think he was justified in feeling wronged, but I think that over quarter billion dollars in your bank account should make up for just a little of that. And that is the truth about this beef. I think that like LeBron, KG should put his pride to the side and let the fans of that poor team that he says he still loves have a day to remember and watch that number 21 jersey be retired. Support AM Hoops and click subscribe. Don't miss a daily NBA video.